Well, a very good afternoon, a very warm, sunny April afternoon here in Berlin's new-ish airport that was supposed to have opened some years ago. It's 2022 now. Today's vlog is not where the video actually starts, unfortunately. A quick tale for those of you who are familiar with Scoot Airlines, I hear you all groan, of course. Unfortunately, Scoots have spectacularly let us down today. Now, this is partially our fault, and I have to tell you a quick reason why. So, the truth is that we were always on a tight connection from Heathrow this morning. And as we now know, Scoot has a very rigid minimum 60 minute check-in. So today we were supposed to be flying from here in Berlin down to Athens with Scoot, the low cost offshoot from Singapore Airlines. Whilst they, yes, fly 787s between here and Athens, which is great, it's a short haul route, but you can fly a wide body airliner. Unfortunately, this aircraft gets delayed constantly. This aircraft never ever leaves on time. So the handling agent, Visarg, said, no, nope, we can't help you. We, even though you've checked in online, we can't print you the boarding pass because you've missed the check-in time at the desk. The only reason we had to go to the desk, the only reason they're not doing web check-in at the moment is because of COVID, because they like to see your vaccination certificates. And that's the only reason that we had to go and do the check-in at the desk. But here we are some two hours after the scheduled departure time. We've been here for three hours and they just would not let us get on that flight. Thankfully, it's Ryanair to the rescue and with a two hour last minute low cost flight down to Athens, we make it with plenty of time to try out Aegean back to Manchester this evening. Crazy days like these with tight connections are always very high risk that something will go wrong. But with the last of three flights today on the horizon, I'm looking forward to some amazing Aegean hospitality. And if the first flight is anything to go by, it should be great. But what about Olympic? Aren't they the national airline of Greece? Well, Aegean Airlines was originally set up as a competitor to what was then Greece's national state-owned airline, Olympic. However, Olympic, similar to Alitalia of Italy, had long been propped up by their respective governments, and when the Greek government called time, Aegean took over as Greece's mid-haul operator, and Olympic became the subsidiary flying domestic flights around Greece and her islands. Interesting fact, since the collapse of Olympic Airlines in 2009, Greece does not have any Greek-owned long-haul flights. In its heyday, Olympic Airlines did operate large long-haul aircraft, including the Boeing 747. And incidentally, if you want to see it, it's parked up at the old Athens airport, Alinicon, which itself closed in 2001. Well, good evening from the Aegean Business Class Lounge here in Athens, Greece. A couple of years ago, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll remember that I took an Austrian Airlines flight from Vienna back to Heathrow and rated it one of Europe's best business class airlines. No, said many of you. Many of you said, you can't make that claim until you've tried Aegean business class. So here we are, two years later, trying Aegean business class, starting right here in this excellent, really nice Aegean business class lounge. Let me show you around and let's get on board and I'll be the judge of whether Aegean Airlines is indeed the best business class in Europe. The flagship Aegean lounge here in Athens is, like myself, well appointed, and unlike myself, is looking very fresh. Well, I have been on the go since four o'clock this morning and already flown thousands of miles. Tonight's flight is on a two-year-old Airbus A320neo and will take three hours and 36 minutes to fly back to Manchester with a cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. Do look out for some of the great cities we see on what turns out to be a very clear night for flying. Boarding is as usual on this route by bus, but once on board, I'm seated opposite just one other person in business class tonight.
Menus are handed out, but as with my previous Aegean flight, I was able to order my desired meal at the time of booking, so I know I'll be trying out pasta with prawns and sauce. I didn't fancy the octopus, as I'd heard about a spate of octopuses being held for ransom. They had to pay the squidnappers to get them back. Once airborne, the in-flight Wi-Fi was switched on. It's free for the entire journey in business class, and Aegean, being the launch partner of European Aviation Network, within Marsat and Deutsche Telekom, meant that I achieved a whopping 90 megabits per second download speed, making it the best airborne Wi-Fi that I have ever used. All Aegean Airbus aircraft will have this installed by the end of 2024. With the tablecloth laid, it's time for dinner, and as with my previous flight, was a feast not to be missed. Alongside my delicious prawns was a side salad of generous starter of tabbouleh with cherry tomato. Tabbouleh is a salad made of finely chopped parsley with tomatoes, mint, onion, and seasoned with olive oil, lemon juice, salt, and sweet pepper. It tasted great. Dessert was a chocolate bar which I kept for later, unlike the endlessly flowing white wine which just added to the experience. And as if that wasn't enough, I was then offered my choice of espresso and this grape-infused biscuit. So, Aegean Airways, um, so far, very, very impressed. Uh, we're about halfway back to Manchester now. Uh, there's only two of us in business class tonight, so I've kind of had the rock star service, which is always nice, you know. Uh, so the highlight really is the middle tray which for those of you who fly with British Airways regularly in Club Europe, we lost that some years ago when they got the new aircraft. That was under the, uh, the old Willie Walsh, Alex Cruz regime, but it still remains here. And I think it's a permanent fixture because this aircraft is only two years old. What else do I like about Aegean Airways? And they actually asked me, what coffee would you like? And I've never had that before in any airline that I can remember. Uh, you normally ask for a coffee, you get a coffee, but they could do all sorts. And I'm just awaiting an ouzo. They top up the wine glass, which is great. Every time I take a sip, she comes and tops it up. They really can't do enough for you. Oddly, one of the strange things is timings. So not from Heathrow, where you've got a choice of more flights, but if you fly from Manchester, so this flight lands at Manchester at quarter to midnight, which is fine, because I'm staying at Manchester tonight, so it's cool. But then it flies back, it doesn't do a night stop. So it leaves Manchester at half past midnight back down to Athens. And I think it lands back into Athens local time about 6 a.m. So that's quite grueling on the crew and I would have thought quite grueling on passengers as well because whilst I'm quite used to flying overnight on the eastbound flights back from the US, uh, I can't remember ever flying overnight on a mid-haul flight in Europe. But there must be a reason for it, maybe just down to aircraft availability, I don't know. By this point, it's time for toilet camp, so let's take a look around. With dinner service cleared away, Adrian turned off the lights completely in business class tonight. This meant I could see some great undisturbed views of the illuminated cities beneath us. Here we are, flying over Germany. The crew asked if I would like an Uzo or two, and well, who am I to turn down such an offer? Plamari Uzo is served by Aegean, and it's made on my favourite Greek island of Lesvos. Excellent. And as always, a huge thanks to James, Joe, Kieran, and every one of my Patreon supporters. So hopefully you've got a fairly decent understanding now of why there is such a hype around Aegean Airlines European business class. It is really good. If you haven't tried it, I would urge you to. We'll cover the costs, like I said earlier. I can tell you what I paid for this flight. Off the top of my head, I can't remember right now, but I'll confirm it. Uh, but what I can tell you is you can get some fairly decent business. But what I can tell you is you can get some fairly decent business class deals from £360 return. And a little tip, if like me, you're going for Star Alliance Gold status, and we'll cover that with Aegean because Aegean is one of the easier ways to get Starlines gold particularly in year two onwards because it's quite the the renewal requirement is quite straightforward and lower than 
the likes of Lufthansa and Austria. So we'll cover that. I'll cover that separately um, when I get when I edit the video. But essentially, if you fly to Manchester, you get four thousand tier points, or the equivalent within Adrian. If you fly to Heathrow, you only get three thousand seven hundred. I don't know why that is because it's pretty much a parallel, similar distance. If you're flying, if you're flying sort of northwest over Europe from Athens. So whether you fly to Heathrow or whether you fly to Manchester, I'm not sure why there's such a discrepancy. But essentially, that does make a difference if you're going to Star Alliance Gold. So, as I said, that's about it really from me, guys. Thanks for watching. It has been an absolute pleasure flying with Aegean on this flight and on the daytime flight. And I can't recommend it highly enough. If you've never tried it, if you're curious, give it a go. Book in advance, like I said. You can get it from £360 return which for a four hour sector each way is uh, excellent value for money. So thanks again for watching and I'll leave you to enjoy whatever footage I can get as we descend into Manchester at midnight. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.